So, I'm back <laughs> to talk more about fountain pens. Before I get into anything, I want to thank every single one of you who left a comment on my last video about my first fountain pen. You guys in the fountain pen community are so kind and generous with your knowledge. You know, as a beginner, a novice in the fountain pen world, um, I love gaining new knowledge and learning from you guys who are a lot more advanced than me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I still have yet to write down all your recommendations as far as fountain pens and inks because I do want to try them in the future. Today, I wanted to share what I recently purchased. So through all your recommendations and tips and tricks, I did decide to buy a new fountain pen. So before we get into the good stuff, I want to update you all on the fountain pen I talked about in the first video. So I did receive a couple of comments saying that this fountain pen isn't by Aspen. A couple of you guys mentioned that this is actually called the Hongdian Black Forest Fountain Pen, I believe. And in that first video, I did mention that this is gonna be my number one go-to fountain pen to use for drawing and writing. With all the comments that I've received from you all, it really got me thinking. <laughs> and now I've decided to use this fountain pen just for writing. You guys know, I talk about, where is it at? This pen. Um, I use the Muji 0.38 ballpoint pen. I've been using it for like over five years now and I talk about it all the time. I use this pen every day. I usually buy them in bulk, like a pack of five or a pack of 10 because I go through them very fast and I love it. But you know, like I mentioned in the first video, I wanna be more eco-friendly, sustainable, and you know, the Muji pens are plastic, so I decided that I'm going to just use my Hongdian fountain pen for the writing that I've been doing with my Muji pens. Also in that first video, I talked about the sketch ink, which is this one right here. And a lot of you guys warned me about waterproof inks and how they tend to clog the fountain pen. So um, I decided that I won't be using the sketch ink for the fountain pens. I think what I'll be doing for now is I'll use it with a brush. So when I do ink illustrations, I can use this as like, you know, for shadows because this sketch ink is in the color gray. So it'll be nice to use for, you know, depth, shadows. And so I ended up taking out the ink from the ink converter. I clean it out and everything. I actually enjoy cleaning out the ink converter. Is that weird? It's just soothing. <laughs> but anyway, so I ended up buying the actual ink that is best for this fountain pen, which is the Hongdian black ink. So I'm gonna fill this up right now. All right. So this is the Hongdian black ink. It's very heavy. Okay. That was definitely a lot easier than the first time I tried to fill up <laughs> the ink. I'm learning guys, I'm learning. I am not prepared today. Ooh. Just 
clean it on here. So far the ink looks nice. Okay. Hold on, let me get tissue. Okay, so I have a bunch of different sketchbooks and notebooks. I'm, I just grabbed this one I got from Daiso last year. I know you guys said that paper is important and not all paper is best for fountain pens. So I'm just gonna test it out and see. I don't wanna buy any new sketchbooks at the moment. So hopefully what I have works well with it. There's a bunch of pages in this one. Oh yeah, I'm loving this ink already. You guys know I only use black ink for writing, for sketching. This one is so dark, which is what I am looking for. I am loving it. I'm impressed. I am impressed. Now, let's see if it bleeds. Very minimal. I don't see it bleeding. It just, maybe like a little, little dots here and there for the most part. It's good. And this paper is quite thin. I don't know what the GSM is. I'm just gonna write something really random. Today, <laughs> is <clears throat> Today is April Fool's Day. <laughs> Rain cursive. Wow. Let's try another one. So I bought this Leuston 1917 dotted notebook. So I originally used this notebook for my bullet journal, but I don't use a bullet journal anymore. So that one's good too. For morning pages this year, I decided to use my Hobonichi. I think it's the A5 size. So it's bigger than this one, but I want to test it out in this old one. My morning pages notebook is upstairs, so I don't want to go and grab it, but let me just go to a random page on here and show you. If you guys know, Hobonichi, their pages are very thin. So really curious to see how well this fountain pen writes on it. Like hopefully it doesn't bleed. Look how thick <laughs> this Hobonichi is. Okay, that's good, it doesn't bleed. So I may use this for my morning pages. I'm gonna test it out tomorrow morning. 
So I'm really impressed with this ink. That's it for this one. That's gonna be my favorite pen to write with. All right, so I did cave in and bought a new fountain pen, but this one I got specifically for drawing and sketching. And I did mention it in my last video. I mentioned that I asked a few of my favorite Hermes sketchers and they did recommend this specific one to me. So I've had this fountain pen on my bookmarks for almost a year now and I probably should have added it on my wish list, but I didn't for some reason. But it's fine because, you know, this one is quite inexpensive, just like the Hongdian. So I ended up getting the Sailor Fude Nib, as uh, it Sailor Fude de Manen fountain pen and I got the green one because if you guys didn't know, I love green. Aside from black, I do love green. So a lot of you guys did recommend this in the comments and I was so happy to hear that because I was really thinking about getting this one. And prior to purchasing this, I did watch a few demos on it and I was impressed with the line variation. So I knew I had to get it for like urban sketching and just sketching in general, you know? So along with that, I got the ink converter and the ink that I ended up purchasing, which was highly recommended by a lot of you. Now there were maybe two or three inks that a lot of you guys recommended. And I ended up getting this one because it was often purchased <laughs> with the Sailor Fude nib. So I got the Platinum Carbon Ink, which a lot of you guys have raved about. So I'm really excited to use it. All right, so I'm gonna open it up. After this, I'm gonna do a demo drawing. I wanna draw this delicious drink that I got from Daiso maybe a few weeks ago. I haven't drank it yet because I wanted to save it for a good time, <laughs> which is probably today. I probably shouldn't drink it today though because I do have a lingering cough. But if you guys ever go to Daiso or any Asian market, um, this is the Moshi Sparkling Uji Matcha White Strawberry. So I'm gonna be drawing this later. So this food in a nib, fountain pen looks a lot longer. <laughs> it is. It's a lot longer than my Hongdian fountain pen. This one definitely feels a lot lighter. So this one has a, if you can see it, a 55 degree angle to the nib, which is what produces those line variations. And I feel like it's gonna be interesting <laughs> to play around with because I have to really think about, you know, how I hold the pen. Let's open this up. Oh, it comes with a couple of cartridges. I think this is a blue ink. Um, I'm not gonna use this though. Is why I got the converter. All right. So you guys did mention other ink. I can't even pronounce it. The majority of you guys mentioned that ink and I want to try it out eventually, but I just feel like the Planet Carbon ink would work well for me. This is the Carbon ink from Black. Let's take this again. Wow. Look at that glass bottle. All right. Oh, what is that? Am I supposed to take it out or leave it in there? <laughs> um, let me read the box first. 
Slowly flip the bottle upside down and turn back. The reservoir will be filled with ink upon turning back the bottle. Okay, so it has an image here. I don't know how do you do it? So I just gotta flip it upside down. Um, okay, so that thing is supposed to be there. I just dip it in there, okay. Ooh. Hold up. <laughs> okay. The only thing I hate about filling up the ink converter is that you waste a lot of ink on the nib when you're wiping it. But whatever. I've got some ink on me. All right. So I'm gonna do my demo in the Strathmore Mixed Media Art Journal, but before that, I do wanna do a quick test in the Loistrum Pocket Sketchbook. I like using this sketchbook for when I'm doing urban sketching or cafe sketches. So I just wanna see how well it holds up. I'm just gonna take this page here. All right, first test. Ooh, immediately, yes. <laughs> it didn't take that much time for the ink to flow out. It was like instant. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> I'm already impressed. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where have you been my whole life? Why didn't I buy this like years ago? This would have been so much easier. OMG. Okay, it does very well. There's no bleeding. So the reason why I wanted to get this one is because honestly, I feel like this would be all five different micron pen sizes in one. I mentioned in my last video, I have been using micron pens for over a decade now. And normally, whenever I go sketching on location, I will have at least five of these with me. I always have like a 005, 01, 02, 03, and 05. And so I constantly have to switch between, you know, you know, pens and having to like, you know, take them out of my pouch. And I mean, it's not annoying, but it does take a lot, a lot of space in my pouch. And one thing to know about me is that I don't like to bring a whole bunch of art supplies with me when I'm on the go. I love to keep my art supplies to a minimum. So this solves that problem for me. And like I said, why didn't I not buy this years ago? It would have saved me so much time and money. But now that I have it, oh, I'm never going back. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm still going to be using these pens when I'm at home for sure. Like there's still a lot of ink left in here, but I'm definitely going to be gravitating more towards my food and nib. Now that we have tested that out in the sketchbook, let's get to the demo. This one has a bit more texture to it. I normally go for hot press paper because I don't like a lot of texture. So. <clears throat>
Yeah, it's a little harder to write with this one. So, just like last time, I'm gonna be using my Sharinka watercolor set and my Aquash water, br water brush. Okay, I messed up a little bit. <laughs> it is quite hard <clears throat> to hold it because when I think I'm drawing a straight line, it ends up not being straight. <laughs> but this is only a demo, so. Only thing I need to work on is how I hold it, like at what angle. I definitely felt like I was a little bit more cautious with drawing because it is very different from a multi-liner for sure. But I'm really excited to play around with it more. So when it comes to paper, I would say I like it better with the Leuchtturm sketchbook because I feel like the nib glides much smoother with this paper as opposed to the Strathmore, which has a bit more texture to it. This one, it, it was a little bit harder for me to draw on, which is why I, I always go for my Loistrum 1917 sketchbook. I love, love, love this paper so very much. And so I'm definitely be using this along with my Sailor Fluid and a nib. I mean, now I know. <laughs> I don't really like how it looks on this paper, so I would not even worry about this one. <laughs> With that said, I'm really excited because I do plan on going to a cafe sometime soon, and 
I want to make this video before then because I will be using the Fuda nib. So my final thoughts on the Sela Fuda nib, I do really, really love it. Um, after doing more tests on the page in the Loist from 1917 sketchbook, I'm really looking forward to using it more often and just really getting myself used to, you know, writing and drawing with it and playing around with the angles and just continue practicing with it because I do really love the line variation in this. And especially with this sketchbook, I really love how it looks. This is gonna be the best duo for on location sketches. I just know it. <laughs> so before I go, I wanna share my updated on location art supply kit. Now that I have taken out the Micron pens, there's gonna be a lot more space in my Glossier pink pouch. You guys know I use these pouches a lot when I go on location. I've been using it for years. So first is my Leuchtturm 1917 pocket sketchbook in the color taupe. My watercolor set. This is the Schmincke 24 half pan. And then I have my Muji mechanical pencil 0.5 lead. And then the quick eraser. My aquash water brush. And then I have my Hongdian Black Forest Fountain Pen for writing. And my Sailor Fuda Nib Fountain Pen. Have my Glossier Pink Pouch. I'm gonna put my sketchbook in here first. <clears throat> and then my watercolor set. I'm hoping this pen fits in here. <laughs> this <clears throat> perfect omg and it closes very easily so this is my on location sketching kit and it fits so perfectly in this pink pouch very minimal which is how I like it. It won't add too much weight onto my purse, which is very important to me because I tend to get shoulder and back pain quite often. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, thank you all for sharing all of your knowledge, all your recommendations. I appreciate you all so very much. If you have any other tips and tricks you'd like to share with the community, leave them in the comments down below. I'm eager to learn more. And if you love and appreciate our journaling and urban sketch, subscribe down below if you haven't yet. As always, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.